Hey guys, Mike Gamer 12 here. And I'm gonna start playing Crimes and Punishment, Sherlock Holmes. I have to restart because the video for the last time messed up. And hope you guys enjoy. Memory oh, okay. I have no idea what that is. Casebook. <sighs> yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Had to restart. <laughs> Had a lot of static. Casebook. You're gonna see me open that up a lot too. Here we go. Don't kill me, please. <laughs> you are utterly mad. Stop, Holmes. Is that you, Watson? Yes, of course it is. And you almost killed me. Nonsense. I was aiming for the vases. Blindfolded? Watson, quiet please. I'm trying to concentrate. Ah, Lestrade. What is it this time? He can see me. Well, here it is, and it's a good one, Mr. Holmes. A gentleman by the name of Peter Carey, also known as Black Peter, has been murdered. A sailor, most probably. What happened here? Oh, Mr. Holmes, how could you? It's the only exercise I've had all week. A grateful client from Limoges sent me a vase collection this morning. I couldn't think of a better use for it. You're out of your mind. I missed four out of ten. Given you were blindfolded, that was very good. Can I have a try? Am I the only sane one here? I suppose that Watson is right, Inspector. Yes. A little brain work would be preferable now. Do please tell us more about Black Peter. Peter Carey, born in 1845 and 50 years old. An ambitious sort, he achieved much success in seal and whale hunting around Scandinavia. Retired in 1884 with a small fortune. He invested his money in a property called Woodman's League, near Forest Row in Sussex. It was where he lived for six years and where he was found dead yesterday. Has the investigation already begun? Yes and no. In fact, this crime is so mysterious that I would prefer you to join me down there. Give me half an hour to prepare, Inspector. Take your time and join me there. I have to go through the yard first. The many men struck again. What have they done this time? They robbed a powder reserve. I'll meet you at Woodman's Lee, Mr. Holmes. I should help Mrs. Hudson here. I also have several appointments that I must keep this afternoon. I shall go alone then. All right, let's go. Let's 
Okay. Uh, women's league. Can I just travel from the book? Oh, that's right. I have to get dressed. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> Green suit. Some letters. This is where I keep my post. Newspapers, encyclopedias. Analysis table. Telescope. Okay. <laughs> Watson. And a map. A map of London and the surrounding area. It. Pathway, right across stone path, footprints. These footprints appear to be quite large. It seems that the garden was well maintained. All right, gardening. I forget I can run. <laughs> Inspector Lestrade, when will you remove my husband's body? It's sacrilegious to leave him here like this. As soon as we can, Mrs. Carey, I assure you. Allow me to introduce you to Mr. Sherlock Holmes. He's a detective. No doubt you've heard of him. I'll wait for you in front of the cabin, Mr. Holmes. My condolences, Mrs. Carey. Thank you, Mr. Holmes. Alright, profile. Another on the face. That's a grocery. Crescent tit. Turning gloves. And birdhouse. Madam, can you tell me if you saw or heard anything unusual upon the night of the murder? At two o'clock in the morning, I heard a terrible scream. I thought nothing of it then. He would scream all the time when he was drunk. Okay, got drunk a lot. Can you please tell me what occurred on the evening of the murder? Well, Peter got drunk in the evening. He was in such a terrible temper. Usually, whenever that happened, he'd stay all night drinking in his cabin before passing out. Do you remember at what time you found your husband's body? In the morning, at around seven o'clock. I noticed the cabin door was open, but I didn't go in to take a look, for I knew my husband would not have liked it. At around ten o'clock, I dared to glance in through the door and... Oh dear... Okay, she's a, she kind of fears him, I think. Was your husband accustomed to receiving visitors? 
Oh, no, I don't think so. I mean, he didn't really have many friends. We lived quite an isolated life here after his retirement. The garden is very large and well-maintained. Do you employ someone to look after it? It is true. Oh, there is a lot of work, but my husband took care of it himself. Everything will become easier. You have indeed suffered a great loss, Mrs. Carey. Nevertheless, I believe it will be less of a burden for you soon. Yes. Life with Peter was never easy. But he was still my husband. He was different, wasn't he? When you first met him upon your return from Plymouth. Yes, Mr. Holmes. Oh, my goodness, but how do you know about that? Oh. Um, pilgrimage. You undertook a pilgrimage to the Cathedral of Santiago de Compostela when you were young. That much is evident from the rosary in your hand. The shortest route for the pilgrim from England to Spain is from Plymouth. I believe that you met Peter Carey as a young sailor there, and you married him soon afterwards. That is indeed what happened, Mr. Holmes. How extraordinary. Thank you, madam. All right. Kiss book. An amazing life. Take to our unhappy marriage with Peter. She's very religious. I undertook a St. James Way pilgrimage when she was young. Judith is from the country, someone near the ancient pine woods of Ivernus and Stressby in Scotland. The Christ of Tidburg can be found. She's religious and went to her pilgrimage. Pretty much everything you just heard. Repeat. Peter Carey's body is inside the cabin. We took care not to touch anything. The door is locked. Wait just a moment, Mr. Holmes, and I'll open it. I locked it yesterday to ensure that no one should enter the cabin and tamper with the evidence. Ah, good thinking. Hello, hello, hello. What is it, Lestrade? It seems to me that someone has tried to force it, Mr. Holmes. Let me see. The texture background, though. <laughs> All right. Go look. Scratches. These scratches are fresh. You're right. Someone tried to force open the door. I swear these scratches were not here yesterday. Our mysterious visitor came here last night. Well, he's not the man for the job. This lock is not a difficult one. Perhaps he did not have the right tool. And we... Okay. What a terrible way to die. Yeah, really. Jeez. Shelf. Piece of space. This place is not covered with dust, like the rest of the shelf. An object was taken from here. It was larger than a book. A box or a small chest, perhaps. Okay. The tooth of a sperm whale, probably from one of Peter Carey's catches. Now is that? Hmm. The ship's logs of the Sea Unicorn for the years 1878 to 1884. Peter Carey was her captain. Captain of the Sea Unicorn. Harpoons for hunting whales. Boots. Peter Carey's boots. They look to be a size eight. Okay. 
Com compare those with the footprints outside. Old navigation instruments, nothing interesting. Okay. Um, map. Dundee. Hammerfest. It's a whaling map. I, I know. It's <laughs> to the table. Someone drank from this glass recently. So there's two. So someone else is here. Rum, a sailor's drink. It seems that Captain right, that was he's... enjoying a drink before he met his death. Alright, that he's very much an alcoholic. The initials PC have been crudely burned. A sailor's work. Hmm. This aroma is familiar, but to recognize it, I must construct my associations in one picture. Oh, there we go. I'm well. Uh, there we go. Yes. This is a coarse tobacco, quite strong and very popular among sailors. All right, on to the body. No, wait. The Sea Unicorn. She was the ship that Peter Carey commanded. All right, now to the body. The weapon fully penetrated the body. The force of the blow was immense. Peter Carey was impaled to the wall by a whaling harpoon. This man is in his 50s, yet he still looks quite strong. Peter Carey was fully dressed. He was not caught by surprise, it is possible that he knew his murderer. That's what I'm saying, because he had two glasses. Oh, look. J.H.N. are probably the initials of the owner of this notebook. Hmm. The pattern of the blood stain indicates that the notebook was not lying on the floor prior to the crime but it was dropped into the pool of blood after the death of Peter Carey. These abbreviations mean something, but what? You need to find Mason. You need to tell us about the numbers. <laughs> this wooden handle is plain and solid. This blood is from the pool underneath the dead body. Peter Carey tried to defend himself with this knife, but he did not succeed. Okay, starting to suspect it's the gardener. Because he's not here. 
There's obviously a gardener. Okay. No book. Break-ins. Calgary wine. Ambush might be made tonight. Ha. Huh. Someone was here yesterday. They attempted to force the door to gain entry. Organize an ambush. Hello. It seems that the guy I know. <laughs> well, Mr. Rounds, what do you think? Now, I think that we are lucky. And why is that? Because of last night's attempted break-in. Oof. You've lost me. It is very probable that whoever came here hoped to find the door open. They tried to force it with a knife blade, but they failed. What will they do? Why, return tonight, when they will be better prepared. Aha! So what do you propose? We shall remain on the outside, near the window, where we stand the best chance of catching sight of our visitor. Well, gentlemen, ready your pistols. We have a long night ahead of us. All right, I'm going to end it here. I will see you in the next video. Make sure you leave a like. And if you want to comment and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video.